الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي <تصفيق> اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين اما بعد <coughs> الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be here today to perform the salat al jumu'ah and to listen to the khutbah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in and upon his family members and companions we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah his mercy upon each and every one of us to shower his hidayah his guidance upon us to shower his forgiveness upon us and to shower his acceptance upon us <clears throat> we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our salah accept our prayer accept our dua accept all our a'mal fi sabilillah i once more ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahma his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah <clears throat> i seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance I first of all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah his mercy upon me to shower his hidayah upon me to shower his forgiveness upon me I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the taqwa the piety the iman the faith the hikmah the wisdom the ilm the knowledge and once more the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah i put my tawakkal i put my trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah and bi idhnillah with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the last sermon we reminded ourselves on that topic of the business deal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about recommended and ordered us to do 
so that we may earn victory, success, earn Allah's pleasure in this world and in the hereafter. So that was the khutbah two weeks ago, and I do not want to get back into that topic because then it takes me off the time and the schedule. And because we are trying very hard, well, I should say myself trying very hard, the, other stu the students are able to finish on time. I am never able to finish on time. Stop for Allah. But <laughs> we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the hidayah and guidance. So two weeks ago, we reminded ourselves on the deal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered us to get that success and victory in this world and the here, hereafter. Today, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would like to remind myself and remind you and our viewers worldwide on Al Hikmah TV, Facebook, YouTube, all our viewers who follow us here from all over the world. And you know, it's so interesting. It is so interesting. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Brother Zal, would you believe? This week I had someone contacted me through the Hassan from Kashmir. A boy that used to study with me. And his son follows our khutbahs here on Al Hikmah TV. His son happened to be looking at it. The father, who is 60 years, we were boys, 16, 17, when we were studying. His father says, I remember that guy. We were friends. The son contacted me, and subhanAllah, I spoke to him just yesterday, the day before yesterday, I think, after so many years. I'm like, wow. I felt like I was 16 and not 60 talking to him. He was so moved that, you know, Subhanallah, as boys, we got back together to get back into the days. And I said, where are you living? He said, in Kashmir. I said, right, I do remember that. So, you know, alhamdulillah, there are people all over the world, all over this world. And he said, my kids are all your fans, all over here in Kashmir. So I said, no, that gives me the green light to want to come to Kashmir, inshallah. He said, yes, you got to come. I said, mashallah. So, all our viewers all over the world, may Allah bless you, bless us all, insha'Allah. So today, insha'Allah, bi'ithnillah, I would like to touch on a topic, remind myself, remind you, a topic that is not really controversial, not totally controversial, but there are some controversies around it. And that is the topic of marriage. Marriage. I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone will debate the fact that marriage is a controversial topic. Everybody accepts that. Who we get married to could be controversial. And one of the biggest problems in today's time is when do we get married? And to whom do we get married? That's the controversy that exists. If I ask Hafiz Munir, why aren't you not married now? He might tell me, my father wants me to marry a Bengali. I say, but Hafiz Munir, you're a Muslim. You need to look for a Muslim first. And that is another controversy. Because our parents are Pakistanis and Arabs and Bengalis and Trinidadians and Caribbean, or American, or whatever we may be, Nobody's saying don't marry people of your nationality. Mashallah, yes, go for it. But if you see someone and if there is someone or their parent to offer you, their daughter or their son, who is a pious, righteous, good person, and it's the time to get married, and you think that your child needs to get married, the nationality should never be an issue. That's point number one. And that's a hard thing for people to understand. You know, we want run a marriage column in Al Hikmat magazine for many, 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 many years. Alhamdulillah, a lot of people got married. It's online, it's in the Al Hikmat magazine. You can take a copy before you leave. And you've got a few names, but online we got more names. A lot of people get married through it, alhamdulillah, mashallah. 
But unfortunately, a lot of people, when they, we ask them, and it's very confidential, we don't put names, we don't put numbers. Anyone interested, they contact Al Hikmat office. But it's interesting to know, or maybe it's unfortunate to know, that a lot of people ask to put the nationality they're looking for. But I can't tell them anything. That's their choice. If you choose to be, eat biryani, mashallah, that's your taste. And in marriage, that's your choice. I want to make this very clear. What you, what we choose to get, doesn't matter. It could be Bangladeshi, Pakistani, American, Arab, Caribbean, African, wherever. That's not a problem. But some people ask to put that. And I can understand why they do that. But we should not let nationality come in front of what the Prophet ﷺ spoke about. Our Prophet ﷺ, he made it very clear the four things that people look for in marriage. The four things that people look for in marriage. They look for their family background, and that does not mean nationality. What kind of family are they? Good families. You look at beauty in the person. The boy is handsome or not. The girl is beautiful or not. You go just marry anything. You look at some wealth. Can the boy afford to marry this girl or not? Or is the girl's parents wealthy enough that if a poor boy marries, he's set? Yeah, you can look at all of that. Nothing's wrong. That's hakika. That's reality. But the prophet, peace be upon him, says, what comes before everything is taqwa and piety. You look for piety in the person you're getting married to. You look for righteousness in the person you're getting married to. That comes before the family background, the wealth, the beauty. How many people look for that? That's not normally the first thing that they look for. We look for everything else. So, but that's, mashallah, alhamdulillah, with the new generations here in America, I've seen that those walls coming down. You know, walls is a big topic nowadays, from the president goes back, go back. So I see those walls coming down. But yet people look for the other things before piety. And we've got to remind ourselves that piety is a major condition. Now, and I don't want to get too much in details because the Jum'ah time is not sufficient. This is a lifetime topic, marriage. The point I want to remind myself and remind you of in marriage, specifically, my brothers and sisters, is the time of marriage. The time, the time. When is the controversial question? When? Everybody accepts marry. But when do we get married? Again, it just happened that that's the question that we answered in Al-Hikmat. And it's strange enough that last week in the imam's class, one of the students asked me that question too. Was it that question, Hafiz? Yes. So how do we go about getting a girl to get married? Mashallah. That was nice that one of our boys asked that. And definitely I didn't tell them to look for a girl in a club, in a nightclub, or down on the side of the beach walk. No, 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 no. Piety. Righteousness. Chastity. These are the conditions that the Prophet spoke about. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about. And this is what anybody would want. Anybody would want that. As the priority. Piety is priority. So, if you check the al magazine again, I, will, I, I won't go in details. That was one of the answers we have and had to answer on the question answer page. And again, you can have a copy of the Al-Hikmat. Or you can go online and Google Al-Hikmat and you will get the question. When marriage, marriage can either be farz. A lot of people say marriage is sunnah. Marriage is sunnah. Marriage is not only sunnah. Marriage can be farz. Farz, you know, like you have to pray Jummah Salah and pray the five times Salah. Marriage can fall into that category. Marriage can fall into the category of sunnah. 
And marriage can fall into the category of haram. Oh yeah, marriage can become haram. And very haram. Briefly, well, when is marriage for us? When a boy or a girl or a man or a woman, this is not a boy or girl, let's don't fool ourselves. You've got a lot of women who are divorced, whose husbands died, or a lot of men whose wives died or divorced. And if there is that need for the opposite partner, and there is that desire, then marriage becomes compulsory, forced upon that person. Forced, forced, forced. Oh yeah, some of the Islamic fuqaha and jurists have said, then getting married for that person is more important than praying sunnah, salah, and nafil salah. Because now it's forced. Because it's going to prevent that person from com committing adultery. It's going to prevent that person from committing fornication. It's going to prevent that person from many things. So it becomes farce. Sunnah, whether you have the desire and the zeal to get married or not, you reach the age and stage to get married, it is naturally sunnah. Haram? Yeah. You marry the wrong person, that could be haram. If you are the wrong person to get married, and you're marrying someone for a different purpose, you're marrying someone for the father's wealth, you're marrying a girl for the father's wealth, you're marrying a guy because he is wealthy, you got a good job, are you marrying the boy or are you marrying his degree? Huh? A lot of people marry their children to wealth and degrees. That's not what you marry to. Then they suffer the consequences after. And then they take, they do zulm, oppression on the spouse. So if a person knows that honestly I'm not marrying you for the pleasure of Allah, and I'm not marrying you because I love you, and it's only about what you have, then that's an oppression. Then that is haram because you're taking advantage of somebody. Yeah, I hope we don't get a lot of divorce cases now because of that. It should not be. It should be for the pleasure of Allah. Pleasure of Allah. And yes, because you love the person and for your love and your pleasure. MashaAllah. Allah has given that, that gunjaish, that concession, that permissibility, that recommendation that yes, you should marry. This is a, an opportunity of love, happiness, and pleasure Allah has created in marriage. So nothing is wrong with that. But if it's for other reasons, then that poor person, you're taking, doing zulm and oppression on that person. It becomes haram because you're not doing it for the pleasure of Allah. Actually, we're doing it against the pleasure of Allah. And in the mal'amalu bin niyad, the Prophet wasallam says, actions are judged by intention. So the intention is haram. Haram. That's point number. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he told a bunch of young people, and the point I want to get at here is that marriage at a young age is what is recommended in Islam. Marriage at a young age. Now remember we already said far sunnah, haram. The Prophet, peace be upon him, told a bunch of young people. He said, oh, young people, the synopsis of the hadith is, he said, get married. If you have the ability to get married, get married. If you can't, then fast. What? Fast. How many young people today who are not married, you see them fasting? Bray mm -hmm. They probably fast in other things and very fast doing other things. The fingers are very fast on the website and the phone and all the other sites. Yeah. Prophet says fast because he knows the consequences of a person not getting married at a young age. And especially in today's time, with all these distractions around us and all these beautiful attractions around us, 
to not get married in the right time? Allahu Akbar, my brothers and sisters, let us not fool ourselves. Aqalmandiyo kele ishara kafi hai. For intelligent people, signs are enough. Signs are enough. We know what we see outside. We know what we see everywhere else. The only thing is that we don't see it here. In our home and our side and our families. We see it everywhere else. And everybody else sees it on us. That's interesting to understand. Prophet, peace be upon him, said what? And this is a very important issue. Do you know marriage? Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, marriage, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe, he created the universe for mankind, humankind. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, before he commanded prayer, before he commanded fasting, before he commanded a hajj, before he commanded anything, what did he do? He created a wife for him. According to the books, the very first relationship that existed among human beings was the relationship of a husband and wife. Not even a mother and father. Not even a brother and sister. Not even children and parents. The first relationship, whether you check the Bible, the Torah, the Psalms, the Quran, the first human relationship that God Almighty created was the relationship of marriage. See how important marriage is. God could have done whatever he wanted. He could have done something else. He didn't have to show marriage so important as the very first thing he established. Love, happiness, peace. Because in Surah Rum, chapter 30, verse 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا He created your spouse so you can find peace and sakina. Chapter 30, verse 21. And he says, I, Allah, has created love, muhabbat. I have created that love for a husband and wife between them. God has created that. And he said, and I shower my rahmah and mercy on a husband and wife. So the very first relationship was marriage. Have you ever pondered over the fact that the very first murder, the very first murder, the very first murder that ever happened in the history of humankind was by whom? Hmm? Cain killed Abel. Oh yeah, Bible, Torah, Psalms tell us that. This is no kind of kahani, you know. This is no stories, my brothers and sisters. I, I, I don't believe in fake news. That's one good thing I like about Mr. Trump, the president. He doesn't believe in fake news, and I don't believe in fake news. So these kind of fake stories and kahani we hear on, I don't believe. Let's take facts. The very first murder that ever happened was by Cain killed Abel. You know why he killed Abel? It was about marriage. Oh, yeah. But Brian, you realize that? The very first criminal crime murder was because of marriage. He didn't get to marry the person he wanted to marry. So he murdered the person who was in the way of his marriage. Because Cain wanted to marry his own sister because she was beautiful. But he, the sister that was born with him, that's a whole different history how the children were born, etc. Time does not permit us to look at the time. It's already quarter past. I'm supposed to finish the first khutbah already. He was supposed to marry the sister of Abel. And the beautiful sister, his sister, was supposed to marry Abel. And Cain was supposed to marry the sister of Abel. And Abel was mar supposed to marry Cain's sister. But again, wrong person. So just because of the wrong person, it caused the first murder. Today... Today, you go check a lot of murders, a lot of murders in America, in the world. See how many murders happen around 
marriage, love, marriage, wrong person, wrong time, right person, wrong time, wrong place. See how history repeats itself? Yeah, interesting. A lot of history, you go back and you check the history of certain things that happened and why it happened. Riots, fitna, chaos, families, disruption, corruption, disputes, enmity between families, friends, brothers, sisters, relatives around marriage. Oh yeah, very interesting. Go check it out. First murder. So the prophet, peace be upon him, said, marry if you have the ability to. If you don't have the ability, you can't get married, you don't want to get married, then don't force yourself into it. Mashallah, at least you should. It is sunnah. But if you think you can handle it, well, don't let it be haram and you mishandle your spouse. Because the hukuk, the rights of the wife, the rights of the husband, that we got to live up to. Yeah. So in the second khutbah, my brothers and sisters, but before I get to the second khutbah, you know, yesterday, yesterday was the 14th of February. And yesterday, a very historic day in Florida, where those 17 students were murdered, murdered, murdered. Young boys and girls. So a lot of places had a lot of interfaith programs, interfaith programs. But you know, I was thinking, huh? while this, was a, this boy sh went and shot all these students, and innocent students die. Yesterday there, were, there, there was a prayer vigil at the Pembroke Pine City. And I, the mayor, the commissioners, all the police chief, everybody were there. And I was telling them in my message, I say, you know, why do we have to wait for a tragedy? This is a problem we have as human beings. Why do we have to wait for a tragedy, a disaster? a calamity before we come together. Don't you realize nowadays when someone dies, that's when you see people you never see? Because we're a bunch of dead people. We only meet when someone dies. Our common factor is death. Oh, why do we have to be in a tragedy ourselves now? Being a tragedy in our family ourselves before we could love our family members, before we could love our friends, before we can love our neighbors, before we can love our co-workers, before we can love our classmates. You know, we're telling them that. Why? This is a life that people live nowadays. Only when you're in problems, your heart opens up for other people. You're sick, you're dying, you're in problems in life. Well, now you know to greet everybody, smile with everybody, love everybody. But if we have no problems, we don't care about anybody. What a life, eh? That's what you call guru and takabur. Pride, arrogance. It's all about ourselves. But when we're in problems, we want the love from everybody else. But on another note, it doesn't necessarily have to take someone to shoot our children to kill them. It could have been any one of us. It could have been any one of our children. What about the idea of we're spending all our money and all our time and all our effort in making our children come up with the hope that we'll get them married at 29, 30, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then they die in an accident. Someone shoots them. Then you have just ruined that poor child's happiness. Unfair. A lot of parents. A lot of parents today. And that's the point I want to get at. A lot of parents today... We were married at the age of 19, 20, 21. Right, brother, at what age you get married? 21. But unfortunately, you want your children to marry at 29, 30, 31. Why? Why are we unfair to our children? You wanted to have the happiness, huh? The fun, the happiness, the leisure, the pleasure with your wife and your young wife and young husband. And you deprive your children for 10 years? What if during these 10 years the kids die? And they never get to have that happiness in life. Oh, halal happiness. I don't know if it's, it's happening otherwise. 
Some people might say, well, they have, it's all there. But we talk of the halal way. And Why do we deprive them? Because we're not following the sunnah way. We're not following the sunnah way. Nothing is wrong for them to get married. Brothers are married at 21. Look, he just said that. I got married at 21. Alhamdulillah. No job. Listen, no job. And I don't think Brother Azad had a job when he got married neither. Look, he's sitting here, a little millionaire guy here. No job and he got married. I had no job when I got married. So I'm not telling you something that is not hakikat. Here's a poor man got married with no job. Here's a rich man got married with no job. So don't tell me, yeah, I did it and it did it happen. But wealthy, smart thinking people, it doesn't happen. No, 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 no. I know a lot of people who got married 19, 20, 21, had no job, had nothing. Today they're millionaires. Successful families. Why deprive the children? Think. Let's think ahead. Don't wait for a shootout and an accident and a disaster and regret we didn't make our children happy. That's a responsibility. That's a duty in the right time. I'm not saying force them to get married. Don't ever force them because the marriage will not be valid. Don't force. That's not in Islam. I got married at 21. No job. Hafizab, no job, eh? Mm -hmm. Six children, and I'm 60, and I'm still living, alhamdulillah. No job. Six children, 60 years. Built a home for the poor, children. Built many massages all over the world. Been the means and the path, alhamdulillah. I am built it. I just, Allah chose me as a khidmat to be part of it. Islamic schools, no job. Six children, 60 years, and built so many sarqajariya. There are people who are millionaires and have not even built one masjid for the pleasure of Allah. One home for the poor for the pleasure of Allah. One school for people to study. But we're thinking of building this dunya and not our own akhirah. Yeah. Anyhow, in the second khutbah, we'll continue. We just got a five, ten minutes to conclude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May he guide us. May he protect us. May he grant us jannah, paradise without reckoning. Wa akhida dawan. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wala Aqibati Lil Muttaqeen, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Rasulahi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabihi Ajma'een. Once more, Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for blessing us to be here today and to listen to the khutbah. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabihi Ajma'een. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness, and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. I again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the, the quality of tawakkal al Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to continue with the second khutbah, insha'Allah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. So in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Chapter 30, Surah Rum, verse 21. And you hear this verse all the time. You see it all the time when people invite people for a nikah and a marriage ceremony. A lot of times they use this verse 
in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa min ayatihi. And from amongst the signs of Allah, An khalaqa lakum min anfusikum. That He has created from amongst you. From amongst you. From you. Azwajalitas kunu ilayha. He has created for you your mate, your spouse. Yeah. And then he continues to say, Litaskunu ilayha, so that you may find peace and sakin and tranquility. So Allah is saying, marriage is about peace, love, happiness, tranquility. And that's what I'm telling you, man, telling myself and reminding myself and reminding you, when you get married in the, married in the right time, you have more love, you have more happiness, you have more fun, you have more pleasure, you have more blessings. Oh yeah, don't procrastinate it unnecessarily if you can and have the ability to. As I said, I got married when I was studying. My parents maintained me. Brother Azad, his wife maintained him. He was lucky to marry a wife who had money. So he was a poor boy, but his wife maintained him. She might just get a wife who can maintain him as a young boy. Yeah. Mashallah. That's the case. You're lucky. Allah is saying here, purpose of marriage is peace, happiness. You see, well, sometimes when you wait, again, I'm saying, the condition is piety. Those of us who came late, in the earlier part of the khutbah, I mentioned piety, piety, the righteous, dress, the righteous person, the pious person, the good person is a condition, is a condition. Two things we're talking about here. Look for the good qualities in the person. Don't just look for it. Anybody and marry your children, or no, you yourself don't look for anybody and marry. Look for piety and righteousness and chastity as a condition. Yeah, that's important. That's imp and you must have the ability and you must want to get married too. And if you have the iman and the faith in Allah, you will want to obey the commands of Allah and follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because Allah says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 1 that he has created man and woman. And he has created many men and women from man and woman. So Allah brought men and women together and created the multiplication of many men and many women. So he has blessed us with that opportunity to the continue what Allah has established is following what Allah has established. And the Prophet ﷺ has practiced. And in addition to that, now Allah is saying, forget about all this now. The command is to please Allah, it's the sunnah. Allah is saying, you, the person who get married, you get happiness, you get pleasure, you get love, you get mercy. Oh yeah, it's a happy. Oh yeah, litaskunu ilayha. Peace. Love. Because Allah goes on and says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Allah says, and He created that love and mercy between the husband and wife. And then He says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ He says, but these are signs for people who have some brains. I didn't say that, eh? Allah is saying, these are signs for people who reflect, who got some brains and they could think and they could ponder on the haqiqat of life. That uh, my child can die at 21 in an accident. My daughter can die at 22 in an accident. She can become a doctor, lawyer, but she will never have enjoyed this real halal, sunnah life, Quranic life. Do you know the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said in hadith, subhanallah. And you go home and check this verse or take the khutbah. From the CD, it's free of charge on Al Hikmat Dawa table, or go back on Al Hikmat TV, or check Al Hikmat uh, Facebook, whatever, YouTube, you can get every day references. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says three things a person must not delay. It's unfortunate that a lot of us only practice two. Three things, not two. Your prayer, the prayer, our salah, one. The burial of a person, too. And what's the third one by Amin Sheikh Sahib? You should know that, man. Hafiz Muni, what is it? Let me ask some of the unmarried boys. No man? Marriage, Allahu Akbar. When you find the appropriate person 
to get married. The good and righteous person. Do not procrastinate that. And then he went on to say that that can be the result of fitna, corruption. And do you know how many people, when they don't get married to the right person in the right time, how much fitna goes on? Well, the easiest fitna that happens is somebody takes her first, and you lose the person. And then it results in divorce because she liked you. So the, the person she gets married to never happy with her, and she's never happy with him. Or he's never happy with her or him. Do you know that's one of the results for a lot of divorces? I had a whole class with our imam students recently. When people get married too late, and they fell in love ten times before they get married, and then they married Mr. Abdullah at the age of 30 and 35, when they have loved 40 people before, they can never come to compatibility with this person they marry after falling in love ten times. Then they get married and all the whole life they reminisce on that previous love life. Never happy. Never happy. Nothing makes them happy. They may probably marry you for the money or just a little beauty. He or she, be whatever it may be. And their life is always back on what happened. So that's why people are encouraged to marry early. So you don't have all these obstacles in life that when you do get married, you know, ek se shari karna, adusre se mohabbat karna. You know what that means, brother Brian? You married to one person, but your heart is attached to somebody else. How you can live happy? I see that brother smiling. That has happened regularly, huh? Yeah, ye to hamesha hote hai, bhai. A lot of people get married to one person and they're in love with somebody else. Why are you laughing, brother Zad? That happened to you. It's a problem. But that happens when you procrastinate marriage too long because you allow these things and these people to come in your life. And then you're never happy with the person you get married because you just married because this beautiful girl opportunity came. Or this wealthy man opportunity came with a big doctorate. And then when you start living, you realize, oh boy, he's just doctorate but not well rated, bad rated. Out of one to ten, he's a number one. So it doesn't work well. And then the person never happy. Ah, we're never happy. Because we went against the sunnah. And it causes a lot of divorces also. And then people get to hate the marriage. Marriage is not bad. Marriage is sunnah. Marriage is Quranic. Marriage has been designed by Allah. For happiness, for peace, for pleasure. But if we don't marry the right time and to the right person, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, just as you hasten to bury the dead and you should hasten with your salah, with marriage, you must hasten with, I mean, bury with your salah. You got to hasten to bury the dead. The three things you must not procrastinate is marriage. You find the right person, then marry the person. Whether you can afford it or not, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Allah will put barakat. I know that is what probably passing through a lot of your people's mind. Eh? Yeah. Well, how are you going to afford it? Do you know there was a man? You see, a lot of us like to think our brain, our style. We forget about how when we got married at 1921, Allah is the one who afforded it then. And Allah made us successful. Have many more children than people have today. Made our children successful. And if Allah, the same Allah, in an, a new Allah, in Billah, the same Allah took care of us, will take care for the fitna and to prevent the corruption. You know, there was a man, the Prophet Sallallahu once a woman went, long story short, there's a whole long hadith. And she told the Prophet Sallallahu I want to get married to you. The Prophet Sallallahu did not answer. Bend his head. I want to get married to you. Bend his head. I want to get married to you. He bend his head. So then a, a man in the audience got up and he said, he realized the prophet says some, uh, because again, remember, you have a choice, eh? don't marry by force. It's not every woman that comes to you and offer their hands, you must marry them. And it's not every man that comes to you and offer his hands, you must marry them. They got reasons, protocol, procedure. We know all, we got to go through that. But we're just talking about time today, importance. Don't deliberately procrastinate unnecessarily without a reason. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked the man, you want to get married? What do you have to give the woman? He said, I don't have anything. He said, you have a ring? Iron, made out of iron, not gold and diamond, eh? Iron? He said, nothing. He said, you have a, you have a, a izar, a lungi or a pajama or something? 
say, not even, I've only got the one I have. If I give it to her, I will have to walk naked. Huh? Professor Sam asked him, do you know the Quran? He said, yes. He said, how much have you memorized in the Quran? He said, Fala Fala Surah. He said, okay, I will accept that as the mahar for you to marry her. Allah Akbar. Who did that wedding? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not you and I. You see, a lot of us talk Muslim, Quran, Sunnah, Allah. Do we have the Iman? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he will put barakat in marriage. His rahmah, his mercy. As he take care of us, he will take care of two of us. I'm not saying just be stupid and don't be smart and don't get a job. and don't. Yes, men have to take care of women. That's there. Nobody says no. Oh, nobody says no. But that does not mean that you should lose the good opportunity in the right time. And I say good opportunity, piety, righteousness, chastity. Otherwise, you know what has happened today? Some people is like, yeah, I want to wait for my son and my daughter to have everything. Their own cars, their own jobs, their own houses, their own properties. I want my children to have everything so then they reach 90, 29 and 30 and they really have everything. And in some cases, they lost everything too. And you should know what we're talking about. Not only that, hear what happens. Don't be shy, let's be real. They got everything, house, car, property, money and good banking account. And then they bring anything for you because they have everything so they bring anything. They pick up something on the side of the road, they bring it for you too. And say, Dad, this is what I got. Dad got no choice. But they say, MashaAllah, wah wah. And in the heart, the dad cried. <laughs> or the daughter brings something home. Or the son brings. Nothing in the eyes of Allah. Nothing they picked up that pleases Allah. Right? If they bring something of piety, righteousness, chastity, masha Allah. But you want them to get everything and then they pick up anything on the side of the road. And you know what I mean by anything. I don't need to tell you guys that. You know what is anything. Sometimes you got to ask yourself, would you have married that? And I don't use he or she. I've got to use that because sometimes people pass the stage of pronoun. But because you want to please your children, you have no, no other choice but to say, go ahead. You know you're not happy. You know it's not the right thing for your child. You know your children will not be happy. But who is at fault? The parents. Because you procrastinated. You went against the hadith of the Prophet When 10 years before, blessed opportunities came. Blessed opportunities came. Righteous people, children came to you. Good looking, nice, pretty, pious, good. Remember, when you're younger. Right, Brother Shamir? When you're younger, I know you're not very young right now, you have many more choices. Oh yeah, remember when you're 21, you have plenty of choices. You could get a full package, good family background, beauty, right, piety. You could get everything, degree. When you get an older age, you have no more, not too many choices. Right, Basif? Not too many choices. You gotta just take what you get or pick up what you find. Let's think like intelligent people. The Quran says, people with sense will reflect. Yeah, people with sense will reflect. So my brothers and sisters, I know most of you came late. We were talking just a synopsis as we conclude on the importance of marriage and the controversy over when to get married. Nothing is wrong in getting married in the right time. And what is the right time? The right time is what Allah and His Rasul says. And I mentioned about when it's Farz and when it's Sunnah, when it could be Haram. The Al Hikmat magazine got the answer. I'm not going to go for it. A lot of people, a lot of intelligent people, a lot of educated people, a lot of bright people, a lot of millionaires, a lot of successful people married while they were studying. When they were young, they have a prosperous family, successful family, nice children, nice family. I'm not saying if you wait longer, you wouldn't get it. But don't take the chance. It's not always can happen. Death can come before. Sickness can come before. Accidents can come before. A mad guy could walk in and shoot our children before. Mm -hmm. Or worse than that, they marry the wrong person. And for the rest of their life, you're not happy. 
And what hurts even more, they marry someone who, do, do, who does not even tell the parents, Assalamu alaikum. You have to, you have to go down to your daughter-in-law and son-in-law knees and toes and beg them. Rather than they respect you and say, hi dad, how you doing? Assalamu alaikum. No even respect, no love. Children suffering, you suffering, the whole family suffering. Because we procrastinated too long. And that's not my opinion. You go study the Quran and Sunnah. Again, remember, I'm not telling anyone get married young. I'm saying get married when the Quran and the Sunnah says. And if younger is the right time for you and you have the ability to, and piety and righteousness and chastity comes to you, don't procrastinate it because the Prophet wasallam said, do not procrastinate that opportunity that comes to you because there will be fitna. And today when I look around in the world and see a lot of the fitna, the majority of fitna today is a family breakdown. And it all starts from marriage. The wrong person, the wrong time. Yeah. So we were reminding ourselves of that. So those of us who missed that, please, uh, you can get that in the, the Al-Hikmat Dawah table, the khutbah that we were given from the beginning on this topic, inshallah. Time does not permit us, my brothers and sisters, but let us pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, and let us pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, and let us pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us and give us a true understanding. And let us remember that marriage is not a thing. It should be first for the pleasure of Allah, follow the sunnah, but it is one of those things that Allah has designed to make us happy. Happy, happy, love, happiness, pleasure. So Allah knows what's best, best for us. And that's why the first thing Allah did for humankind was establish marriage. The very first thing. You think when he was going to get Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, married to Eve, you think Allah asked Adam what job you got? Or well, Adam should have said, I ah, no job, you're getting me married? To this big woman, no job, how are we going to take care of us? That question did not even exist. Yeah. Today, Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, got married without a job. Look at the billions of children he got. You and I want to be better than that? Adam, peace be upon him, got married without a job. And he has billions of children throughout the world. Billions. Some of us, Allah knows this. Anyhow, I don't want to cross the record time. So we're going to have to conclude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And just before we make the dua, I've been having some questions in the last week from people all over about uh, Umrah. We are really on fine-tuning down and closing down on the Umrah package for Ramadan. And the Umrah in Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, you get the bl blessings of Hajj. And as if you did Umrah with the Prophet, Hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So we're on a real wind down now. Because Ramadan is just in about 11 weeks from now, and we'll be going in about 12 weeks' time. So please, those of you who have been giving your names and calling us, please let's get some confirmation. Let the girls know by the desk how serious you are, because the later you get is the more the tickets and the hotels will go up like craziness when it comes to Umrah. And again, those people in Trinidad and the Caribbean where we are having that interfaith banquet dinner, people have been calling us up here. Yes, we're having it. It's happening on March the 17th. March the 17th, we expect a lot of interest in that program. Wonderful guests coming. I don't want to make the announcement publicly who we expect, but it's going to be a fantastic person. And in the Caribbean, we're going to bring Hindus, Christians, Muslims, Africans, Indians, people of all different races and, and languages and religions together. Because in recent times, we have seen people building walls, walls between themselves, walls, and only when a tragedy happens, then they climb over the wall to see each other. No, we shouldn't wait for a tragedy to talk to our neighbors and be nice with our neighbors and our friends and our relatives. And this is something that's been happening, and I see it happening all over the world. People building walls. And that is something we want to do in the Caribbean with our Caribbean office and bring all these, all these Hindus and Christians and Muslims and everybody together. There's a race and African and Indians together because Islam commands us to do that. Unite the people, bring them together on common grounds of oneness. So we're doing that on March the 17th at 4.30 p.m. in Trinidad and Tobago for people in the Caribbean. So our viewers worldwide who are interested, feel free to contact the Al-Hikmat office. I mean, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. ولا عقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. 
Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Allah, we thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, Ya Allah. We ask thee, Allah, to give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina wa banar. Inna Allahumma laikatuhu yisalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammadin bi'adadi man sallallahu wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammadin bi'adadi man qa'ada wa qam. Wa salli ala jamil anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Wa ala kulli malaykatika al-muqarrabeen. Wa ala ibadillahi salihin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimeen. Ibadullah. Inna Allah ya'amadu bil adli wal ihsan. Wa ita'i dhil qurba. Wa yanha'an al-fahsha wal munkari wal bagh. Ya'idhukum na'allakum tadhakkaroon. Wa la thikullahi ta'ala a'la wa a'la wa azza wa jalla wa hamu. Akbar. Allahu akbar. Akimu salam.